DD214 Network Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Network is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. How's everybody doing? doing? Hey man, I'm, man, I feel like a bucket of gold. I'm in a, I'm pretty good. Long, yeah. Week. The full moon was kicking ass. Full yeah, moon's always kicking ass. Did you howl at it? Did you fucking howl at it? Negative. I don't howl at the moon. Why? Because I scrape it for cheese and I eat it. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Never did that before. I, it's, it's all good. I, I didn't, I, I'm not, I'm just not familiar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how, how, how's everybody? How you feeling? How you doing? Doing okay. I can't, I can't complain. I don't know about, I don't know about Joe. I, I'm, uh, I'm doing just fine. Just fine and dandy. Fine and fucking dandy. Yeah. I mean, same here. Not, Eating not buddy. really it. We're eating, we're eating fucking, complain. Yeah, we're we're eating fucking steak and mac and cheese over here, dude. So it's all good. It's all good in the hood. Nobody's fucking crying here. Yeah, well, why not? If you're not crying, I ain't fucking crying, dude. I ain't fucking crying about this shit. All right, we're not doing that. We're just not doing that. We're not going there today. All right, we're not doing that. No, no. All right. Oh man. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm multitasking <laughs> here because I thought. I tell. What's going on? So I thought I was supposed to be able to. Thought you're supposed to be able to. I got you. No, it's okay. I got you. Uh, so I, um, I thought it was automatically going live on Rumble, but apparently I have to manually put it in there. I have to manually start it. So I'm in here right now. We're trying, trying something new. Uh. Okay, um, yeah. Right now, yeah. I mean, we're we're just yeah. How was your week, John? How it was, was your week? It was okay. Busy. Lots of podcasts. Lots of podcasts, man. And um, actually, I picked up this brand new camera yesterday. You know, my my wife told me it's you know it's time for me to kind of get something upgraded and. Get a new piece, get a new piece of equipment, and I was just like, okay, great. So, I had a really good budget, and I found something that was under my budget, and it turned out to be a hell of a lot better than than what I truly expected. Okay. Now, now this thing, it's the DJI Osmos Action Four, and we were going to get the GoPro. There, but when I looked at the GoPro and the indoor and the indoor footage that the GoPros were producing. It looked like Jay's webcam. What do you no, mean? No offense, like, you know, like it was, uh, it was grainy. You know, you know, it wasn't what I was looking for, and so I saw this right under the selection on on Best Buy, and I was like, let me check this. I looked at a bunch of videos real quick, and as you can see, I'm using it right now. The qual—I mean, what do you guys think of the quality? 
uh, I mean, it looks a little, it looks a lot cleaner than the camera you were using. I, and I think you were using a key, Canon EOS Rebel. Um, oh, so um, a 4000D. Okay, so yeah. you were using the Canon 4000D before, mm -hmm. and that was super grainy, like even more grainy than the built-in uh, webcam on Jay's laptop. I mean, in Jay's cameras, typically, depending on lighting situations, his his webcam's really fucking good for being a built-in webcam. Um, I Which mean, I'm not, I'm not on my webcam right now, by the way. I did pull my other camera out. This is no longer my webcam. Oh, so you're using your external webcam. I am now using an external webcam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, I mean, the, the one I, the one that was built in was the one was what I used last week. So like you can you can see I don't think there were and, and there, I think you're right there really wasn't much of a difference. It, it looks kind of okay. It looks okay. It looks fine. You know. Well, and and that's the thing. So like you know we've got three different cameras here just represented on this show right now, and this new cam John got looks great i think adding a little bit more lighting to kind of brighten up your environment would definitely make it pop a little bit more that's that's a definite um, i only got one ring light at the moment because me i'm actually using my iphone this is the main camera on my iphone that you see right now no shit. i mean camera's great waterproof comes with three batteries right it comes with all these accessories, a a five foot selfie stick, which I was like, okay. But then it came with this power pack, that's right? The, uh, yeah, that's the battery case. Yeah, it's not just a fucking battery case. You could charge your phone with this too. It's it's incredible how 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 that feature. I mean, I you would never expect it. <clears throat> But one thing that's really cool, it's got a double touchscreen feature. So I'm looking at the camera right now. I have a front screen on it, and it's touchscreen. So if I wanted to manually adjust anything as I'm going, I could just click. I could just click ahead and do it. And then there's a bigger screen in the back. You know. So I mean, it, it's a. Uh, and let me tell you, when I went to Best Buy, they were telling me it was 500, but the but the website said 400, so they price matched. A four hundred dollar camera bundle. I mean, you can use it anywhere you want. It has a one hundred and sixty, one hundred and eighty minute battery life on each battery. Quality is great. You could plug it in. I have no batteries in it right now. It's plugged in straight to the computer as a webcam, and I didn't even have to download anything extra for it to work. So I think this is a great win in in the video yeah. and tech space. You know, mm -hmm. good shit, you know? man. My wife. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at that camera right now on on the uh, Best Buy website, and yeah, it's showing 400 bucks. So, it's, but that's always that's always the good thing with Best Buy is even if in store for some reason their price isn't what it is on the website, they will price match their own website. They will price match Amazon. Like if I pulled this up on Amazon and found it where it was sold oh, yeah. directly by Amazon or it would. So there's two ways that they'll do price matching with like Amazon. It has to be sold directly by Amazon or it has to be sold directly by DGI, DJI through Amazon. If it's sold by any third parties, they won't price match that. Um, Correct. But Best Buy's price match policy is freaking amazing. Yeah, it, I mean it's 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 really good. Best Buy, they were very quick. I mean, I was there for like thirty minutes trying trying to figure out if I was going to go mm -hmm. for the GoPro because I almost did the GoPro, but I was just like, no, let me go with my gut. Let me go with the DJI. It comes with a lot of accessories, man, and I'm very happy with that. I can't wait to go outdoors and use it. We're going to Washington D.C. this summer. Um, you know, down the shore every summer. So we're, I mean, it's going to be a good spring. Yeah. I'm very happy with it. I highly suggest people to go check it out. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've got some suggestions for you, John, for some accessories to use with it. Um, like getting a cold shoe mount. So that way you have a way to quick, quickly attach and detach it so you can like mount it in your workspace 
for using it as your webcam, then you can just quick detach and pop it onto your tripod and move it that way and stuff too. Yeah. Stuff like that's going to help out a lot with something of that nature. So Yeah, it will be cool because when, you know, I'd really love to bring this to Kansas City with me, man. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Sounds like it wouldn't be too hard to do that either. I mean, it, that was the big thing, too. I didn't want to carry – I don't want to carry bulky cameras. Bunch of shit, yeah. Bunch of fucking extra shit, right? Like, if, if, yeah. if you're traveling, it's like – and that's the other thing, too. We've talked about it on this show how many times. You know – All the time, literally. Te te technology is great. If the technology that's coming out is bulkier, harder to use, fucking whatever, than the previous generation, that's not exactly like fucking a step forward. It's a step backwards. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when fucking Apple's fucking dumbass fucking came out with that phone that didn't have a goddamn uh, an actual plug in for like headphones, right. actual plug in plug in headphones. You know what I mean? It's like they had to run they had to run that bullshit back real quick, dude. Because like, which Apple is crazy yeah. for the damn headphones. But I mean, it's yeah. a win. I I suggest a lot of people to get it. It's affordable. You could make a lot of great home movies with it, depending what type of home movies you want to make. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Like before. Before my KC trip in May, the one thing I'm picking up is going to be the uh, the DJI um, their their lav mics. Yeah, their lav mics are 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 pretty decent. They also have this thing called the Pocket, the Pocket mm -hmm. Three. That thing it, it's literally a small stick with a small screen on it, but the quality of video on that is it shoots 4K 60. It's wild. Um. But like before the KC trip, I'm gonna get those DJ DJI mics, and then I've got my Mac, and with my iPhone for the webcam. You know, when me and Jay do this fucking episode in May, with the two of us sitting at very, my Mac, very I'll have us with perfect there. fucking audio. You know, we'll we'll be able to fucking rock that I'll, shit. Perfect. Then, then then I'll actually feel like a true true producer in the other side of the booth. Fucking a, fucking a. You're always in the other side of the booth, John. That's why we stick you in a small little two by two square at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> just like, just King Kong says, "Home, home." <laughs> mm. oh, so, what will happen this week, guys? Not really. Uh, I went jogging a couple times. Fucking got back on the fucking exercise train a little bit. And, I love how, I love how he mm -hmm. says not really, and he goes right to exercising. <laughs> that I mean, that's about as exciting as my week got. That, I mean, that's that's if that gives you any indication. Like it's been, yeah. It's been, I've been home. I've been home all week. Uh, I didn't work this week, so I've been home, fucking around with stuff here around the house and getting the kids to and from school. And like you're look, you, this was a very average ass week. Other than the weather here has been very unseasonably warm. Uh, we're going to have a record high today, record high tomorrow, I think a record high on Tuesday. It is going to be... Fuck yeah. Actually, let, let me just say this. The, the current date of today's show, it is it is 25 February 2024. I am sitting in Kansas City, Missouri. My fucking ticker at the bottom of my goddamn laptop here is telling me it is 62 fucking degrees. 60 fucking two. Fuck this shit. Yeah. That's bullshit. Tomorrow it's gonna be like in the 70s, dude. It's gonna be hotter than fucking Tucson tomorrow here in Kansas City. What the finger fuck is that, bro? It says it right there on Google. No, fuck this shit, man. This well, that's garbage. like you're talking about it being that there. You want to know what it fucking is here? Oh, oh, I, I, not really, but I'm. Tell me, what is it? Forty fucking six. In North Carolina. Oh fuck. <laughs> it's, it's 35 here now. I wish it was fucking 35 here. That's what the fuck it's supposed to be like, in February. What it is, Tucson, and where, right? what it is where you're at right now, Jay, is what it should be fucking here in North Carolina. Track, tracking all, tracking all, tracking like a heroin addict, bro. <laughs> like, dude, if I wanted to fucking go back to 70 degrees in fucking February, I would have fucking moved back to Arizona when I got out of the motherfucking army. I'm sitting in Kansas City, Missouri, sweating my fucking dick off, fucking wearing T-shirts in fucking February, dude. Like I hate that shit, yeah. man. I got all this kick-ass like winter winter clothes and hoodies, fucking jackets and shit, man. I can break out when it's cold, keep all fucking snuggly and warm, dude. And this fucking yeah. bullshit, like summers, summers already fucking I, tapping, summers already tapping me on the forehead with his fucking dick. Like, come on, Jay, 
Come on, it's and then, time to sweat, bro. Time and then here sweat. it is for me. Here it is for me. I'm supposed to be putting all my fucking winter shit up at this point. Right. And I just bought two new fucking hoodies because because it's staying fucking cold here. Yeah. But don't don't let anybody tell you that fucking don't let anybody tell you that fucking climate change is real, folks. Don't let yeah, anybody global tell you warming's that. a myth. No, it's a complete <laughs> fucking myth. Also, we never landed on the moon. We never landed on the moon. Uh the earth is flat and uh fucking jet uh jet fuel can't melt uh steel beams. 9-11 was an inside job. Okay, you heard you heard it here first. You know, climate change is a myth. Don't believe it. All right. <laughs> and the earth is flat. We can't forget that one. Can't forget that one, dude. Like, I mean, dude, we're, we're yeah, living you in, can never forget that one. We're clearly living in a simulation. Clearly living in a simulation. So yeah. fuck it. Just fuck it. Just whatever you do, oh, don't, don't look out for don't look out for everybody else. Just fucking just be completely selfish and do everything for yourself and no one else. You'll be fine. Everything will work out fine. So speaking oh, yeah. of um, <laughs> living in the simulation, did you guys see Shane Gillis's SNO? No, I wanted to see. Speaking of which, Joe, we got to talk about the Peacock thing, dude. Did we have to like get rid of that? That we will talk about that after the show. I love. That. I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. Like I meant to ask you about that, and I had to say that because I would have forgotten to ask you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we. I, I don't think we saw it, Joe or John. <laughs> so, hilarious. He started off, but he's he. he he, uh, Brandon said he's listening on the road. We'll drive safely, man. We want to make sure you drive safely. Ooh, 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 Wainer? Oh, Cleary. 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 Yeah, be safe. Yeah, be safe, fucking Brandon. But yeah, it's good. To, good to have you with us, man. Hope you freaking. Uh, hope you're enjoying your day. Your, hope your Sunday's beautiful. Hope it's fucking beautiful and gorgeous like it here is in Kansas City. I wish it was dark and fucking gloomy. Yeah, dark and fucking gloomy. But no, it's got to be beautiful and fucking sixty-two. This is some bu- fucking bullshit, dude. Fuck that. I want my fucking gloom. I want my darkness, dude. It's the winter time. What the fuck? Look, you're looking. You're looking pretty gloomy over there, man. But anyways, um, so Shane Gillis finally got on SNL, and the, one of the first things he said was, "I'm not even supposed to be here. I don't know how I got here, but I am here." And he was like, "I got fired. Don't Google it. Don't Google it. Just don't <laughs> do yourself a favor." <laughs> So he made. So he was making obviously the good old Shane Gillis, but it felt more like a stand up. Oh shit, he's driving the Fort Drum. Oh shit, fuck yeah, damn. And, hey, and- I got, I got my. I was, I was, ne- I was never stationed at Fort Drum, but I definitely got my fucking mountain tab, homies. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. get it. Badass. Those are the badasses. So what are the? So yeah, so it was great. He started making fun of his father about how his father volunteers for a, for a girls' uh, fo- coaching team or whatever. So there was a couple good jokes, and then he said one of the funniest things I ever heard, and it was, "What? I told you I have my, I you I have my fucking mountain tab, bro. What the fuck did you think I was talking about? No, I know. I was just like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Go so on, go ahead. Uh, so absolutely, Irish. But one of the funniest things he said is that he stopped for a second and was like, "I don't have any jokes for television. I'm sorry. I'm trying really hard." And he just like and like that was the joke. The joke was yeah. that, he, that he that he couldn't really talk about what he was what he wanted to like joke about or whatever. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. He did a couple really good skits, but I for me one of the funniest skits. And, I, and I'm surprised we haven't talked about this either. Uh, the golden Trump shoes. He did a skit. Oh fuck! I can't wait to see this one. I'm gonna check. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can find that on YouTube today. They oh usually- my god! It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Oh, I can't is- wait to see it. I can't he wait. Did, to see he it. did this hilarious skit about how like the golden Trump shoes give you confidence and how like if you just whatever if you say it like you mean it, it it it's true. Oh, and yeah. it, it was just yeah. it was it was one of the funniest skits I've ever seen on and on, on SNL and like it was perfect for Shane Gillis and he may also made this really. You know, just watch it because I, I don't want to say it. It'll it'll probably it'll probably get us in trouble. So just just watch it. Very funny. Um, Shane Gillis is, but it, I didn't hear I don't I didn't hear any Bud Light jokes or anything like that because we all know he got sponsored by Bud Light again. Joe Rogan and Kid Rock just did a whole Bud Light commercial on on the last JRE episode, right? You know, which was which which is which is funny as hell. And even Kid Rock was saying he was like, man, he goes, I'm not. 
I'm not. He goes, I just want to drink Bud Light. And they set him like cases of pallets of beer, too. Funny stuff, man. Funny, funny, funny stuff. But yeah, that, that was SNL yesterday. Fuck yeah. Did, was the uh, weekend update good? Those are usually pretty good, right? I did I didn't watch the weekend update. I didn't watch I just went on the YouTube and saw all the Shane oh, Gillis. Okay. That was it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, what else you guys um, got? What did you guys do this week? <laughs> we I, I I made steak at the house last night. Like I got this fucking last in January I got this uh like ninja sizzler grill and like so i marinated steaks for like 24 hours and some and two two different types of kansas city barbecue sauce actually um i used arthur bryant's and uh some jack stacks actually i, I put it was like mostly arthur bryant's and then i i like drizzled in like a little bit of like jack stacks ori- original and i marinated them in that i marinated the steaks I fucking love barbecue sauce bro and so like they marinated in that shit for like 24 hours and then i fucking put some seasoning on them and I like cooked them on this fucking little ninja grill that I fucking got like last month or yeah, in January and made them shit. I made them all schedule and they were really good. I like listening to them schedule. I do like a good look. I, it just seems like we're going to have the, this. Oh, wait, I move. I moved back too much. I, I see, we're going to have this kind of episode today. So we're just going to talk. So tell me about the sizzle, man. Tell Dude, me about the sizzle. The steaks were actually really good. I was like, it's one of those yeah. like, it's kind of like a George Foreman grill, but it's it's a it's a freaking it's it's just for it's for indoor cooking. You know what I mean? It's like if you, you want to make hamburgers and you can't fucking go outside, you can make you know you can make hamburgers. You can fucking cook vegetables. It's, it's a fucking uh, what do you call that shit, uh, John? It's a fucking hot. It's a hot plate. Griddle. Yeah, griddle. It's a hot plate is griddle, and it's yeah. like it, it's called the Ninja Sizzler. I don't know what the, I, I wasn't really looking and looking for fucking name brands. It was just. <clears throat> I think I think Gordon Ramsay hawks it. Maybe it might be Gordon Ramsay shit. But yeah, it's easy to clean, fucking easy to use. But yeah, I just I fucking marinate. First, I was I was kind of experimenting. I've never marinated ste- like steaks before. I usually I usually season them and cook them like kind of straight up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so this time I wanted to see what a marinated steak tasted like, and I've never really kind of just fucked around with it. So that's what I did, and I put um, just basic uh steak seasoning uh on on it after i pulled them out and then laid them laid them down and seasoned the other season season the other side and then let the motherfuckers cook fucking you know seven or eight minutes on each side and that was it and we I made uh, mac and cheese to go with us so we, we ate steak and mac and cheese last night but that shit was delicious and i got we still got some is this is this what you're talking about that you have let's see John, uh jay roll that beautiful bean footage he joined Yes, that's basically yeah. That's basically it. Mm-hmm. Damn, I love how like the the big. I don't big think it was. I don't think it was fucking three hundred. I don't remember it being three hundred bucks though. What, what were you gonna say, John? I'm sorry. That it's. A, it, I love how the letters on the front they just say big old letters beef. Beef. It's just like there. I mean, it's beef. almost like it's trying to advertise for Arby's. It's got the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja's a pretty good product. I mean, I oh yeah. When I, when I, was I remember this, it. You is. know what? You know no. what? Now that, now that I'm seeing that price, I need to. I want to go. I have the receipt right over here. Give me a second. I want to see. No, how much this is what I'm looking at getting here soon. Oh, that's nice. What it for when oh, it's an indoor that, smoker? Oh yeah. Yeah. So when I when the weather is too shitty for me to actually fire up the smoker out back, oh, yeah. I can still you know smoke some ribs, throw in a pork shoulder, you know, do something of that nature, and fucking do it inside. Dog, dog, what did they have that shit for on the fucking internet? 279 fucking dollars? Mm-hmm. I got that bitch at fucking Walmart for fucking a hundred dollars, homie. Fucking fuck Best Buy, dude. That ain't no Best Buy. That's fucking three times as much. Tar- you, God you, damn, you, dude. God, God damn, dude. I would have got an even better deal from Target as well, because Target, Target's got some work in it too. Hey man, ain't no shame in my I we just we just needed something for indoor cooking. That was like, remember when we had that? So even though it's fucking gonna be 62 degrees here today. You know, last month we had that polar Arctic blast fucking, you know, face fuck that we got for yeah. two weeks straight. It's like, you ain't, dude, ain't nobody going outside to barbecue and that shit, dude. Like, that's that's like when you need to stay indoors and you still need to cook, like, actually, like, you well, need that's, to cook, cook meat. You know what I mean? Like, that's, we're meat, eat, we're, meat, we're definitely meat eaters in this house, dude. So, well, like, that's, that's, that's why kind of I'm do. looking at, I'm looking at getting this, Jay. Oh, is that because, like a little rot- uh, rotisserie thing? No, that's- it's for smoking meat indoors. 
<gasps> so it's a pellet smoker for inside. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah. So when we hit the real rainy season here in North Carolina, I can still yep. do my pork shoulders, my ribs, you know, all How that shit. Fit? How much can you fucking fit in there? Is that, so a half, is that a half slab? So it looks like it's two half slabs on two separate yeah. cooking trays. Yeah, yeah. But like for a pork shoulder, I would have to pull out like the top rack. Yeah. To fit the whole pork shoulder in. Okay. But you could still do it. Yeah. Okay. I fucking hey, dude. Are they don't dude, whatever those price those prices look ridiculous. They cannot be that's what I'm saying. Like, I got this so this is a brand new product. GE just announced it at CES this year. Mm-hmm. And because it's new technology, because it's filtering the smoke, so that way you're not filling your house with smoke when you're smoking the meat, because it's actually using wood pellets like you would on a pellet smoker outside. Right. So the technology being new and shit, the price is a little fucking ridiculous right now. Um, because even straight from GE, this is that's the price you're paying for it. Wow. So if that's a thousand dollar, but 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 when you need to do that stuff, like you, you can do it indoors. And you need it, you got it. Yeah. Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have yeah, it. Yeah, I I mean, as far as like the indoor grill thing, like you're like you've got Jay, I'd go to a fucking thrift store and find a fucking used George Foreman for fucking that's twenty five bucks. I was rich. I was. I was originally looking for more like a George Foreman. And when I saw that one, I was like, oh, I might as well get that one because it's fucking, it's a little bit bigger. There's more space. For a fucking price too. Mm-hmm. I cook, I cooked four, I cooked four fucking Kansas city strip steaks, uh, in fucking less than 20 minutes last night. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. And it didn't smoke my house out and whatever, dude, it was, it was fine, but no, it was, mm-hmm. It was worth the money to me, dude. And it, it definitely, I definitely didn't pay 300 fucking dollars for it. So, anywho, anywho. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're watching Godzilla, man. Yeah. How's that one going? So we started off with Monarch and then we start, and then we went into Godzilla 2014. And then after that, watched Godzilla King of the Monster. Oh, no, we watched Skull Island after that. No, no, we watched Skull Island and then Godzilla 2014. And then we went into Godzilla King of the Monsters. And now we're going to be today. We're going to be finishing up uh, Zilla versus Kong. And I mean, I mean, after that, there's not going to be much until the new Empire comes out very soon. I mean, I think after that, we're going to go right into the original Japanese ones, even the Matthew Broderick one. But out of all of them, the best one out of all these movies so far is Skull Island. You know, between the show Monarch and all the and the movies that have been out, Skull Island yeah. is by far the best, the most well-made of all the Monarch films. Is that the one with Jack Black? No, no. So this one had Samuel Jackson, uh, Tom Tom Hiddleston, um, <clears throat> so many good actors in that. The one you're thinking of, Jack Black, was uh was the King Kong, King Kong, Kong. that That's came right. out before Godzilla 2014, I believe. Yeah, okay. which which was also a fantastic movie too, you know. But it's interesting because this Monarch timeline, there is no mention of King Kong ever going to New York or climbing the Empire State Building. So I don't know if it's something that they're gonna do in the future. Or something, you know. So they have it. It's not something that's part of the timeline yet, but it's super interesting. They did a really good job with the show. I'm enjoy. I am enjoying the hell out of it. Um, New Empire comes out very soon, actually. Um, let's see. New New Empire. Co- actually, it comes out this month. Uh, next month, March 29th. You know, and then there was another Godzilla movie that came out, Godzilla minus one, which was more original to like the original godzillas but yeah man i'm pretty i i, I love the movies they were the movies are really good but king of the monsters is the worst one it should have been king of the monsters should have been the last one in the whole timeline if that makes sense i haven't i mean i really haven't kept up or seen any of these so i missed i missed all those like on my deployments yeah. and stuff so they're pretty good the destruction is amazing Destruction is amazing. I just found the article here. What's one item that makes living in the barracks more comfortable? Ooh, good question. Um, for me, it was just, for me it was just internet, internet, yeah. straight up, or 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 a console. 
console console TV or 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 the internet like or or all three but whatever that's like if you're stuck in the fuck you're stuck in your little fucking six by six by eight cell you know what I mean like whatever right like you barely got enough fucking room to move like but but you still got a TV a fucking you know something to play movies and a video and video games on and the internet like you'll be fine you'll live yep yeah actually. yeah that was I mean it was literally my TV uh my fucking three sixty and my laptop that's what got me by when i was stuck in barracks and mm -hmm. whatnot so hell yeah hell yeah and then what else i mean you just do you want to get into ukraine now we can well we can. did you get did you get my uh did you get the video? video yep okay yeah and there's nothing i don't think there's anything overly crazy on that i, I, remember, I remember when you sent me something like this for the 500th there's day it might have been either the 500th day or it might, it might have been the year. It might have been the year on the year anniversary. Yeah. Maybe, but yeah. So, anywho, freaking, but yeah, we can, yeah, let's, cool. let's talk, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. We named, we named the episode for it anyways, but yeah. So yesterday, yesterday was the uh, second anniversary of the invasion. Well, <laughs> the official invasion of Ukraine, like Crimea, Crimea was invaded in fucking 2014 and that's, a stain on the world too, but um, they tried to actually take the country over officially um, two years ago yesterday, uh, being the being the twenty fourth of February. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I know there's a lot of political discourse over it, and it's really obvious to most people like where the where the discourse is coming from, and it's pretty much all coming from the Kremlin. So when you see people making like talking points about how much tax money we're sending to Ukraine. They're leaving out a lot of important stuff. They're leaving out a lot of important stuff. Like for every tax dollar that we fucking spend on Ukraine, we're getting six dollars back. They're leaving out the fact that if you don't want us to freaking support Ukraine, you're basically giving uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia carte blanche to do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, not only in Ukraine, but basically like uh, Moldova, the Baltics. You know what I mean? Like all these fucking countries that fucking are right there on its border, sharing a border with Russia. OK, and Russia is not going to stop. They're throwing they're throwing fucking their own soldiers into a meat grinder in Ukraine. The war has kind of uh, ground a little bit to, into a stalemate right now. There's not a lot of fucking <clears throat> there's not a lot of movement uh, in the lines on the battlefield, but there's a lot of attrition. Um, uh, Volodymyr uh, Zelensky, uh, President Zelensky in Ukraine, uh, they're having a summit called uh, Ukraine 2024. Uh, you can watch uh, highlights of that uh, pretty much anywhere on the internet right now. Uh, one of the things he said, he they they this is one of the first times that President Zelensky's actually announced uh, casualty or K KIA figures. He says Ukraine has lost, I think a it's it was a little over thirty thousand. Uh, Ukraine has lost a little over thirty thousand, thirty one or thirty three, something like that thousand uh, troops. Mm -hmm. uh, Russian Russian KIA is fucking over one hundred eighty thousand. That's KIA. So it's it's we're they're the they're close to like a one a one to six ratio. But if Russia is willing to kill almost two hundred thousand of their own people in basically less than two years, okay, that is a that is an atrocious atrocious fucking uh, record uh, in war. Like as far as like we we only lost we we lost less than fucking ten thousand people. I think in fucking twenty years in GWAT. I think we lost less than ten thousand KIA. Okay, it's like, different. what's that? I'm saying like th those the the current war numbers are are huge. It's it's a it, large it's, margin. It's staggering. One hundred eighty thousand. That's that's basically almost four entire field armies. Like a field army, like like an, a, a full army would be like fifty thousand people. That's and a full you, army. And if you put it people. into and if you put it into a perspective of population too, that's a whole fucking county. If you that's think a whole, about that's it. a whole fucking city, bro. Like, that's yeah. a whole. Uh, that's a whole ass. And, and some, in some places, a whole state. Yeah, fucking mm -hmm. just about, just about. I mean, you're talking. I mean, the, the the fact that Russia is so willing to just throw the lives of their people away, it and and over what? Like, like Ukraine did nothing. Okay, don't listen to the fucking bullshit about fucking. Ukraine is full of Nazis or fucking like these are all Russian selling points. These are all talking points. OK, and I'm talking to you, Republicans that are fucking stalling the Ukraine aid. I'm talking to you. I don't I, like this is like one. This is one episode where I will fucking call it exactly how I see it. The only people stopping 
any of this in our country and any of the aid going to Ukraine is the fucking Republican Party. They're all out of the Republican Party. OK, I don't we don't usually take sides with this shit, but it's so fucking obvious. And they're and they're they're using the selling points and they're getting the people and our people. Americans mm -hmm. behind fucking Russian talking points like we're wasting our tax dollars when we're not. We're giving them fucking ammunition. Remember when their fucking president said, I don't need a ride when he was offered a ride out of the fucking country. He said, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. He stayed. He just did an interview with a Fox News fucking journalist on the front fucking lines. The president was less than a mile and a half from Russian fucking positions. The president of a whole ass country. Where did fucking Cucker Tarl Tarlson fucking do his interview with, with Putin? In some fucking like glitzy fucking mansion. Cuck. You know what I mean? That fucking cuck. That fucking like Kremlin fucking cock gobbler. Fucking cucker. Cucker. You little bitch. You little fucking bitch. You little Russian fucking puppet bitch. These are all, all your fucking parents out there, you fucking Republicans, dude. All your fucking parents were so goddamn scared of the fucking USSR in the fucking 80s. Ask me how I know. Because I was fucking there and I grew up. And I remember the fucking Cold War. And now you're fucking backing up Russian fucking talking points. Fucking saying we're wasting fucking tax, tax money in Ukraine. You're full of shit. We're backing up freedom. Mm -hmm. We're giving a country, a, a country the right to fucking fight back for itself, for its own independence. When it was promised after the Soviet Union broke up that if they gave up nuclear weapons, by the way, Ukraine was a nuclear power after the Soviet Union broke up because they possessed nuclear weapons. They voluntarily gave them up with the explicit promise from both the United States and Russia that they would that they would they would, they would be kept safe from harm. I How thought it was more than that. I thought it was I thought it was for UN UN um, inclusion. It's that well, they've been working toward they, they've already been, they've always been in the U, in the UN. It's it's they've been yeah. working towards what Putin doesn't like is U, Ukraine's trying to trying to join the, the European Union and NATO. And right. Russia doesn't like that. Russia doesn't want NATO on its fucking border. But if Russia didn't act like fucking Russia's been acting, they probably wouldn't have NATO on their fucking border and they wouldn't have to worry about it. That's the whole reason fucking NATO exists, which is why dumbasses like our fucking former stupid fucking president, when they say they want to pull out of NATO, that's fucking stupid, too. That's another Russian selling point. You guys think NATO is a bad idea? NATO was fucking created to keep back assholes like fucking Russia. Article 5. All you, all you fucking vets out there, they got the Article 5 fucking ribbon from NATO. What does Article 5 fucking mean? Oh, I don't know because I never fucking looked it up. I just fucking joined the army and did what I was fucking told. No, you fucking assholes. Read history. Article 5 means if one, if one NATO country is attacked, all fucking NATO countries fucking go in there and fucking stomp. That's Article 5. Yeah. That's why we had so many different countries in Afghanistan and not Iraq. Okay. That's exactly why we had so many different countries in Afghanistan and so few in Iraq as allies. Okay. That's the difference. So you, anybody fucking talking shit about fucking Ukraine, anybody fucking talking shit about sending them fucking aid, anybody saying we need to pull out of NATO fucking suck our fucking dicks. That's an anti-American stance. Fucking that's like anti-democracy. It's anti-fucking liberty. Ukraine is fighting for their fucking liberty. And while you guys fucking argue while eating your fucking Cheetos and jerking off to your fucking like orange God. Okay. People are actually dying on the front lines like right fucking now. All right. Like put your fucking money where your mouth is fucking. You guys have no idea. Like no fucking idea because you don't care. Mm -hmm. You just want to own the fucking libs. You just want to own the fucking libs. <laughs> fucking. By the way, in case you're wondering, there's no liberals. There's no liberals on this fucking podcast either. Like, just so y'all are tracking. But we definitely ain't fucking Republicans. All right. So, like, if you're against Ukraine, fucking like eat a fucking fat dick. Fuck Putin. Fuck Russia. Okay. Slava Ukraini. Eroyam Slava. All right. For fucking good. For fucking good. And this year, Ukraine 2024, they're coming back in a big, big way. All right. They're coming back. That's right. How do you guys got Jay Rant? Jay ranted. So what do you guys got? Well, I was going to play the video. Please. Oh uh, yeah, it's about. Bruh. Please do. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about it after we watch the video. How about that? Yeah, well, that sounds good to me. For three thousand six hundred fifty-two days. Ukrainians have been resisting Russian aggression. Yes, 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 yes. 
Ten years ago, on 20th of February 2014, Russia started a war against Ukraine. The war it prepared in advance. Following the shooting of activists during the Revolution of Dignity and the flight of the then president, the enemy hoped to catch Ukrainians off guard during a moment of grief and a power crisis. Instead of the expected support, Russians and their allies faced resistance. Ukrainians protested. They made it clear they didn't want to be associated with Russia. And they declared Ukraine's sovereignty. The opinion of local residents mattered little to the aggressor. For the next eight years, the resistance in Crimea went underground while the east of Ukraine became a battlefield against Russian forces. On 24th February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion. And Ukrainians decisively declared, we will resist. Ukrainians fight Russian aggression on the front lines and beyond. both abroad and even under occupation. The forms of resistance change, but the desire to live in a free country only grows stronger. Thus, Ukrainian military and partisans make it clear to the invaders. They won't be here long. We don't know how long the war will last, but one thing is certain, Ukrainians will fight. They will fight despite everything. For three... Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. What, do you got? What, do you, what do you got, Joe? That, that was fucking a good fucking video. That's, That's that, right. I mean, <laughs> that just like, that makes me want to fucking go hop on a fucking jet and go fucking grab a gun and start fucking helping these motherfuckers. Right. Like there's, the, there's, there's, there's Americans over there. There's people from mm -hmm. pretty much every European country, fucking the Baltics. There's people from yeah. Russia. There's people from Russia fighting on fucking Ukraine's side. Okay, like this is like, it's a big fucking deal. This is mm -hmm. this is this is this is like our world taking a stance against fucking like, you know, like dictatorships, uh, autocrats, oligarchs. You know, like people that are just saying like we're gonna fucking just move in and take over. It's like no, the fuck you're not. No, the fuck you're not. This is this is this is our country. It's always been our country. It's been that way for a long fucking time. Like you can fuck off. And you now you're gonna get the fuck out. Oh, they and they are. That's 180 180,000 KIA. Russia has lost 180. That's more than they lost in 10 years in fucking Afghanistan in the 80s, bro. After they fucking invaded in 79. I mean, we're talking like staggering losses. Staggering.
Like they, their military is fucking broke. Like, nobody's fucking left. Nobody's fucking left. I mean, seriously, you cannot take those kind of losses. You can keep throwing meat into the grinder. I mean, that's the only reason that it's at a stalemate right now is because they just can't. The Ukrainians can't fucking kill them fast enough. You know what I'm saying? That's just mm-hmm. like once once them fucking F-16s fucking come into play, dude. Like, by the way, this uh, last this week, uh, uh, a, a Russian AWACS plane was fucking shot down. That's a big loss. An A-50. Yeah. That's a like an AWACS plane. That's mm-hmm. a huge, huge loss. It's a fifty um, million dollar plane. Se- dude, like s- seven or eight fucking fighter jets have been shot down in the last week. I mean, we're talking like just because it's in a stalemate. Okay, don't think Russia is just going to fucking like rush in and fucking win win all of a sudden because it ain't going to happen. Like Ukraine is not giving this one up and they're not stopping until Crimea is fucking back in their hands. There is okay. so much money being blown through this war. Like one missile. How, how much is one missile? 500,000? Even Something more than like that, that, bro. Even you know, more than that, bro. A couple million? It's yeah. crazy. You know, yeah. so all yeah. this money and then the money that they're going to mm-hmm. need to rebuild everything is going to be even more staggering. Oh, well, that- the good the good part about the rebuilding part is that also puts people to work. So that kind of like that money kind of spends itself. That's the, true, uh, actually. Yeah. The, the ammunition the ammunition part is and it's all because it's all because of one person. His name is Vladimir Putin. And on this show, we say fuck you because we ain't fucking scared. All right. Ain't fucking scared. All right. Dude, like fuck Putin. Fuck Russia. All right, fucking don't give a fuck here, dude. Like, ain't fucking scared of that shit. Yeah. The cost of the cost of one missile, John, vastly fucking less than the cost of even one life. And there's there's been hundreds of thousands so far, like that are that are never coming never coming back, that have left this earth. That's the the, the true tragedy of war. All the fucking the, the people traumatized, the fucking the civilians. Civilians always get it the fucking worst. You know, we're talking how many stories of glory, of glory and heroism have occurred, okay, uh, in, in these last two years that will that will probably never be heard, never be heard because the, everyone alive to fucking see it or witness it also fucking have already perished. You know what I mean? It, it, it is it's devastating. It is devastating. And like that country, that country is going to come back. It's going to remain. It's going to remain a fucking powerhouse uh, in Eastern Europe. And probably eventually, because of because that Ukraine is full of farmlands, kind of like uh, uh, the Midwest here in the United States. Yeah, Ukraine is like Europe's fucking breadbasket, dude. And I'm telling you right now, dude. Like in these in these coming years, with the fucking weather changing and the climate changing and stuff, like places that can grow food, dude, are going to become fucking economic powerhouses. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. that's another that's another reason. If you're wondering why, like they might be fucking moving in on them now, like why Russia's fucking getting itchy itchy fucking trigger fingers. It's because the fucking rich and powerful fucking don't deny climate change. They know this shit's coming. But instead of trying to help the earth and fucking fix something, they just want to fucking gather gather up and gobble up all the fucking resources while they can, okay, to to to, to further their own fucking, like, desperate fucking ends. All right? So, anywho. Anywho. Yeah. So, to lighten the mood, um, I got some news. I got some news things here. We could kind of extend the conversations to... Let me go. Let me go. Uh, let me go. Let me go. Refill my cup of joe. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah. So pull, good. So you. So you'll hear it as you're walking away. Oh, Military yeah. helicopter noise sets mood for Australians crocodile mating. Nice. Yeah. So uh, according to Australians ABC Far North, low flying Chinook helicopters have encouraged a, new, a unique mating phenomenon at a crocodile farm in Queensland, Australia. While the racy reptiles may usually tune into classics like Elton John's Crocodile Rock for mood-setting purposes on select flight nights under a waxing moon, it is these vibrations from the heavens that stir unencumbered desires for the semi-aquatic beast. All of the big males got up and roared and bellowed up at the sky, and then after the helicopters left, they made it like mad. John Lever, owner of the Kurana Crocodile Farm, told the Australian outlet following the incident. There's something about the sonic waves that really gets them stirred up. Steamed up from rotary blade aphrodisiacs, the farm's 3,000 plus crocs are likely to yield a large crop of eggs this season. So there's going to be a, a a batch of crocodiles that are going to be born pretty soon. Dude, Dude I just, all I can hear in my head right now is fucking Careless Whisper, you know, like the saxophone playing, you know what I mean, from Careless Whisper. You know, like that's oh that's, shit. That's like fucking all I hear right now is just crocodiles, like just getting, 
you see that you see that you see the black hawk flying over dude and like you just get that fucking chub dude because you remember that one time you fucking flew in yeah. a black hawk i've flown in a black hawk quite a few times but like is that, that kind of like like echo would that kind of count as echolocation what do you mean like you know using the vibrations of sound to communicate sound no. to another animal Ooh. No, right it wouldn't be echolocation but it would be it would it is it's a it's sonic yes it would be yeah. definitely by definitely vibrations but not not to locate more to uh to um influ influence behavior to influence behavior good vibration yeah do, do, oh, you, know, you know there's anti anti-riot devices anti-riot devices that use sonic like sonic uh stuff at like uh, certain 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 it's kilohertz. certain frequencies and kilohertz. It's certain frequencies, and they'll just blast this sonic frequency at a at group humans. of rioters. Humans, yeah, yeah, and, and it, it just immobilizes them. Yeah, it induces feelings of like vertigo and, and nausea. Like you can't stand up straight, and you fucking feel sick. Like you get sick, basically. Like yeah, All right. Yeah, isn't sci isn't science and technology wonderful? It's fucking, and we and we use it in the most horrifying fucking ways possible. Like I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore. Another thing I got here is the Army's 88th Infantry Division liberated the Italian city of Vincenza during the waning days of World War II, mm -hmm. officially returning the city to its people on April 28, 1945. But troops on the ground also took something else away. Uh-oh. A 13-year-old girl's birthday cake. What? It was the night before her birthday, and Mary Mion was hiding in her room's attic with her family as German troops retreated from heavy Allied fire. She awoke the next morning, Americans nearby. Her mother prepared a birthday cake for her fresh from the oven. The cake went to the windowsill. But before it would cool, American soldiers made off with the confection, leaving me on sad at first but grateful that her home was now safe. Felt if anyone deserved the cake, it was the liberators. <laughs> That's a good, I mean, hey, dude, cheers to her, cheers to her for being a little kid and having such a good attitude about it. That's fucking, yeah. that's fucking. It says the army, meanwhile, did not forget and eventually returned to repay its delectable debt. Seventy years later, the art, the U.S. Army gifted me on the replacement cake and celebrated her ninetieth birthday. That tomorrow, is fucking badass. Yeah. Yeah. That is badass. Tomorrow we will eat that dessert with all my family, remembering this wonderful day that I will never forget yeah we were fucking liberators so so let's hold on we need to think of this situation real quick okay war is happening we're world war ii soldiers we're walking by and there's cake that cake is mine guys bro that's the infantry that is the infantry like do we we eat out of garbage we will eat out of garbage cans like that is not if you're hungry that's you will you 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 get what you you get what you get when you get it, and a lot of times you don't get a lot. So you when you find stuff and you come up on some loot, dude, like like cake. We're not supposed to. We we don't steal. We don't fucking. We don't put ourselves in people's houses, you know, and stuff like that. Like outside of like active like in an active war zone or like in a in a uh, urban environment. But it's not freaking. We're not we're not we're not looting. We're not we're not stealing shit from people. It's basically like. You know, World War II, that was a, it was a different time and there weren't, weren't exactly a lot of rules of engagement. And there definitely were there definitely were there was no uh, war, they didn't have what they call war crimes now, because that was the reason we have what we call war crimes now is because of World War II. You know what so, I mean? Literally stealing a birthday cake be considered a war crime. In, the, in theory, it could because you're you're stealing from the local populace. In theory, yes. Oh shit! Really? I was just trying to make a joke. Whoa! Wait a minute. No, it's no, 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 no. It, 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 no again, shit. Again, it's World War II, and this would be a low level. This would be like a misdemeanor level war. Yeah, but yeah. that is that is a that it, that would be considered. Like this isn't having you go against a tribunal and no. potentially being, no. you know, right? Like you're, you're not going to get hung for it. You're not going to get hung yeah. for it. But you, you'll get you'll, you'll get you'll get a fucking you'll get you'll definitely get a feel you're great getting, you'll get a feel great article fifteen and you're gonna do a hard ass forty five and forty five for fucking that shit, dude. If you steal yeah. from if you steal from the locals, your ass is fucking your ass is grass, dude. Your ass is grass. We do not steal. We don't steal from the locals. We don't take we don't take war trophies anymore. We don't we don't we don't take war trophies from the dead. You know what I mean? We have to we have to search we have to search the dead after we kill them. We have to search them. But we do not. We're we're not supposed to take war trophies like all that. Yeah. So we're supposed to, we're supposed to treat uh, POWs uh, humanely. You know, we don't we don't execute we don't execute people out of hand. We don't we don't execute unarmed people like all that shit. Like we actually follow a rule like rules of engagement. 
Like, and it, and it, our discipline and our professionalism uh, shows, you know what I mean? Like bad things happen. The, the people that, that bad things happen to the most in war is the civilians. So it is like when you do stuff to the civilians that are already having to endure war in their country, you're making it that much worse. You know what I mean? And, and so you're not helping, you're hindering. So we, yeah. we, we, enforce, we enforce that shit very strictly. There will be no fucking mistreating of the fucking local populace ever, 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 ever. They come, they come at you sideways with a fucking gun shooting. Well, they're not fucking part of the local populace anymore. Now they're fucking enemies. That's different, right? Yeah. That's not true. Like every, every, you know, every average Tuesday, average Tuesday, fucking ma and pa with their fucking kid. We're not fucking with them. Like, that's like the fight's not with them. You know what I mean? Absolute. So, Absolute. so I mean, I'm trying to fill up the show as best as possible. So I think this last thing. Are you good? Um, you good? Oh. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Go right ahead. Oh, actually, I got two things now. Chinese Jody hit with jail time after stealing military spouse. I saw that. So here in uh, here in the United here in the United States uh, in, in the Army and all all the branches, pretty much. Uh, you know, we, we basically expect to get Jodied. You know what I mean? When we mm -hmm. fucking deploy or fucking do a rotation in Korea or Germany or Italy or wherever. You know, you go to go to go to Djibouti for a year in the Air Force, and you come home and you're you know, all your shit's gone and your wife moved in with her fucking boyfriend who, who rides a motorcycle. Name you know, like, yeah. In China, in China, if you do that to a military person, apparently you can go to jail. So it's, it's kind of funny to think about it like that, but I'm still glad I live in America. <laughs> like I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want people going to jail for fucking, you know what I mean? It's just like, <clears throat> I can just get a, I can just I can just get a divorce, bro. Yeah, like, I, I, I mean it's exactly. It's yeah. up to three years. <laughs> three years, for, three years for fucking. Like you got three years for fucking. I mean, eh, eh. <laughs> Identified as Ma reportedly began an affair with a former co-worker named Yuan, who was also unbeknownst to him an army wife. And when Yuan told Ma of her marital status and the punishment associated with the affair, he broke it off. And he still got in trouble. It it get it gets it gets wild. It get it gets crazier than that. But Ma just couldn't stay away, and he and Yuan moved in together a month later. Uh -huh. Yuan filed for divorce from the husband, who was already serving with the PLA. Hey man, fucking dumbass. Yeah, I mean this is. I mean, yeah, I don't. I, I agree with Jay. Like, I don't feel like fucking should justify jail time. However, you know he. Found out she was a military spouse, breaks it off with her, and then decides, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna risk it. <laughs> I I don't know about you guys, dude, but there ain't no there ain't no fucking pussy good enough in the fucking world, dude, for that shit. I ain't I ain't risking jail time for pussy, bro. I, I, I love, you, bro, I fucking dude, I fucking love the pussy, dude. Okay, like I I fucking spent nine months of my life trying to get out of that motherfucker. I spent the rest of my life since trying to get the fuck back in, right? All right, like I love me some pussy. Ain't no fucking pussy good enough to go to fucking jail for, okay? None. Zero. The percentage is 0. 0.0. All right, yeah. zero. All oh, right. No. We, we got another crazy thing here. Variety is the spice of life that gives it all, said poet William Cooper in 19 in 1785. Mm -hmm. But one former People's Liberation Army member who defected and escaped to the United States claimed claims that he reportedly witnessed troops burning missile fuel to make hot pot a dish that typically involves a pot of hot soup stock into which diners dip meats and other vegetables they were using fucking jet fuel to fucking make the fire yep. is, that what, is that what you're saying in quote he says when we would eat hot pot we would take out the solid fuel and the missile pieces by piece because there were insufficient supplies I would often go along to the armory and ask them for a small round piece of solid fuel when we wanted to have hot pot. Jay's horrified. Do you like cancer? Do you like <laughs> cancer? So, you like, like, so here's the thing. Oh my God. For, for oh. those of us that have deployed and had to deal with the burn pits. No, oh no no! Not had to deal with them. We haven't even dealt with them yet. We we're waiting. We're waiting to deal with them. Like, but oh. yes, yeah. we're still waiting. 
because it's only a matter of time before were you deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan from the years of 2002 to 2020 something 2019. There's gonna be if there's gonna so be a, there's gonna be a lump on the side of my neck the size of a softball someday and I'm like barely gonna be so, able to you might be leave. entitled yeah. to financial compensation yeah. due to burning yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Um that's about the same fucking concept here except you're using i mean we use the kerosene to burn the shit but we're burning yeah, shit so JPA of course there's fucking, but it's, it's JP, JP, jp8 is not jet fuel though that's the thing it's diesel fuel it's yeah. a type of di- it's a type of diesel fuel fucking jet fuel is a whole nother category whole another of, fucking category but like of, why of, the don't, fuck? Don't, of, yeah it's a whole nother category of don't fucking breathe this shit in when it's burning it's a whole different category of don't breathe it in don't and, breathe it in, let alone oh, don't use it to fucking light a fire to cook with. Because that's a whole nother level of stupidity from breathing it in. You're, like, you're, cook, you're cooking with fuel. Like yeah, your yeah. food is now getting embedded with the fucking cancerous toxic fumes <sighs> of this fucking jet fuel. And then you're ingesting said food. It, it's horrifying. It's abjectly horrifying to even think about that. Like, like the lack of the lack of safety, the lack of like the lack of care for people's Don't lives. Matter like, of time before we start seeing people walking around with two heads, you know, an extra eye in their fucking ass crack. Um, <laughs> that's I, I, I got nothing. I, it just it, it's incompetence, and I think it, it's the it, that is the exact type of incompetence we saw with the Russian army when they invaded Ukraine two years ago. They thought they were just going to walk walk in and like march into Kiev. And fucking be done in three days, dude. It's like it's been two years and they've lost a hundred KIA, they've lost a hundred fucking and eighty thousand people. KIA. That's not counting fucking wounded or missing. That's not counting wounded or missing. Like how like that's that's just incompetence uh, uh, in on in staggering amounts, like like burning jet fuel to make food. Do you like cancer? Because that's how you get fucking cancer, like real quick, real fast, and real in a hurry. In uh, other news, that Humvee that went missing in December has still not been found. Oh, somebody's keeping somebody's keeping that in a fucking storage shed, man. Like, yeah. they either they either they did one of two things: they're keeping it and fucking rebuilding it themselves, or they fucking chopped it up for fucking parts, dude. That like, shit's been fucking parted out at this point. Almost, almost guaranteed. Yeah. All right, so this now look, this I'm trying my best. I think this is the last thing I got. All right. This is the last thing I got, and then you guys got to take the wheel, but I think this will do good. Seven things, seven terrifying items to put inside of a room with a veteran. Number one. Okay. Tinnitus. (laughs) Number two. Sand. What is it? Sand. Oh, fuck sand. Why? Fucking hate it. It gets everywhere. Everywhere. It's fucking coarse. It's fucking. <laughs> you remember the Sorry. fucking episode Sound two? Like... Yeah, that's that's exactly what I started thinking when we were going down this fucking path with Zan. Second Zan was mentioned. I channeled my inner fucking Anakin Skywalker on this shit. <laughs> it's, coarse, it's coarse. It's grainy. It gets everywhere. Like... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, number three, a government shutdown. Well, it's fucking. Is that debatable? Uh, yeah, I, I, every time I, I always knew my bank would my my bank would pay me for two months if the government shut down for two months, which which it never did. Yeah. It never. It, it, they, the, the, those shutdowns never last that long. They can't. Like, they just yeah. can't. So next one is black mold. That seems to be a very famous thing in the military. Black mold. Even I myself had black mold in one of my houses, and you know, I, and you know what. And you know what they did to fix it? They sprayed bleach on it. I Sounds have, about right. I have got to. I have got to say that um, the military allowing private housing onto their fucking bases was a huge mistake. It's all coming to fruition now. People called it during GWAT. Barracks are fucking shitty. Fucking housing is fucking married housing is shitty. Fucking black mold is everywhere because people cut corners and everyone fucking grifts off the top. Like they the mil the military needs to fucking retake control of their fucking shit and stop letting private fucking private enterprises fucking into their fucking fold. So yeah. because they lie. They fucking lie. 
they're all fucking liars. So. And the next one, a veggie omelet MRE. I didn't mind that one. That one wasn't like I didn't mind those one. MREs. They're, they weren't. It wasn't good, but like if you put the green salsa in there, because it came with like green salsa. If you put the green salsa in the egg, in the in the in the egg omelet, and just chunked it up and like stirred it around, it wasn't that bad. Everybody so, so what's the worst MRE? I hated chicken fajita and refried beans. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think which one I really didn't like. Um, oh, tuna. I never liked the tuna one. Tuna? Yeah, I'm that not- tuna casserole one was fucking horrible. Was, I wasn't a big fan of the tuna. Yeah, ne- never, never a fan of the tuna. Like, I like, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Um, now, this one, I mean, if wet socks. I mean, just me. Inside and out, civilian, veteran, whatever. I hate wet socks. You want to see Sanchez in a bad mood? Wet socks. I, I, I start saying things that you, I would never say. If- but the missus thinks I'm fucking weird because anytime we leave the house, if it's raining and we're going to be out running errands all day, I always throw an extra pair or two of socks into my fucking yeah pocket and then just leave them in the car and like in between stores i'll change them out even though i know i'm gonna get the next set wet again i just it's it's mm -mm. gotta take care of your feet man gotta take care of your feet yeah fuck socks i mean fuck wet socks i love socks (laughs) uh the last one is a room full of civilians saying thank you for your service (laughs) what a horror yeah it's a little i i appreciate it I appreciate it, but it- let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because, like, no one talks about it. You know, it's nice. You know, and we we are glad that you are are thankful for our service. You know, but depending on the level, I mean, it, it, but it also goes depending on person too, doesn't it? Yeah. You know. So, yeah. Some, some people you can tell are just saying it to say it. And other people you can tell genuinely, maybe appreciate. What? And, then, and then that goes for the other side. Some guys just want to hear it just to hear it. And others are just like, yeah, you know, like, like, well, you know, are you, I, I, like for me, I usually say I, I, I did what I did what I could, you know, you just do, you just do your best. You yeah. just, you I mean, do- the thing is, the thing is you've got the clout chasers who definitely go out there and expect to hear that. Thank you for your service. And then you got guys like the three of us who are like, yeah, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be a dick about you saying thank about you thanking me for fucking going out, out there and serving the country. But at the same time, I don't expect somebody to say it. No. And it's when, when, uh, when you got people, you know, first responders and stuff like that doing dangerous ass shit every fucking day, seeing horrifying shit every Mm -hmm. fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we we did some dangerous shit and we saw some horrifying fucking stuff. But it was like it was a moment in time uh, when when we were serving, or you know, if we, if you happen to be deployed or something, and the, the army, yeah. you know, army, the military in general, you're, you're going to come back with some stories, you come back with some shit, right? But it, it's nice. I'm I'm glad I'm glad our our country got its head out of its ass, you know, after the way they treated fucking the Vietnam veterans. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm glad. I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. Um, Vietnam Veterans Day is coming up too, isn't it? Is it? I think it's March. I think it's March, if I'm not mistaken. Sometime in March. Fact check me, John. Uh, yep, March 29th, the same day that Godzilla and Ooh. New Empire comes out. Perfect. Yeah, I, I had a because I I just got my VFW magazine. I'm pretty sure you guys probably got it too, or it should be coming. And I, it, that that was something that was on the cover. I don't remember where I put it though. But yeah, that 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 new issue just came in and it was talking about Vietnam Veterans Day. Vietnam, man. Nam. 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 Be it fucking Nam. Like, yeah. That's some shit. And they went through some shit. I there's a couple of Vietnam veterans in my uh I my group that I go to freaking once a week and shit. And uh yeah, man, freaking there's some pretty wild cats, dude. Like they're definitely some pretty wild cats, dude. Like it's, it's pretty cool though. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and while we're talking about, uh, Vietnam veterans, I, 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 I do want to take a moment and just say, cause I had, I had a, I had a talk with an army buddy of mine, uh, yesterday and we were talking about 
he's having trouble with his um, his rating right now. And he has he has a, a VSO. He has a veteran service officer, but she's kind of like not doing it for him. And I told him, I was like, look, dude, you need to find your closest vet center because where I go, where I go to is the vet center. But they have people there that like this is what they do. And the vet center was started by Vietnam veterans who were tired of getting the runaround of the VA. They needed they want they, they needed advocates. They needed stuff like group therapy, family therapy, just stuff that like where the VA just gets a little bit over, you know, overwhelmed. Yeah. Like it's another, it's another entity. And actually the VA is, is how I found out about the vet center. So the, the, the vet center does work with the VA, but it is a separate, but it is, it is its own separate entity too as yeah. well. Now, is that person working with the DAV? I'm is sorry. The, is I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know where he found his VSO. I'm not sure where, but in my group, I had somebody saying, because it, 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 it depends on where you are. It depends on who, you, who your VSO is. And sometimes the, like some are better than others as far as like what they know or, okay, we've done this. Like this is who we contact next. You know, sometimes they get stalled out like that. You know, um, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate when I got my rating because I came out the gate and I was good. And there was no, there was no question about yeah. having to fucking file appeal. I didn't have to fucking worry about filing appeals or I came out the gate fucking first time go first time go and fucking everything was fucking like just just handled and it was like oh okay and meanwhile i go to i go to my group and i've got dudes from fucking you know early days of gwat that are still fighting fighting to get their fucking hundred and they're fucking way worse than me you know what i mean like way fucking worse like way worse mm -hmm. off than i am and yeah. so and and a lot of them a lot of them have a similar tale too like they didn't go to the va for fucking years and years so they waited and they sat on it. And by the time they went to the VA, the VA was like, not service connected. Like you've been out for fucking 10 years. You know what I mean? Like blah, 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 blah. And that's a big problem too. Is like, like kids, if you're, if you're currently fucking serving, when you're fucking transitioning out, when you get ready to get your D214, do your fucking VA shit before you get out. And if you don't do it before you get out, do it as soon as you get back to your home after you fucking move, after you get out, after you mm -hmm. get your DDP 14. That's what I did. I, I waited, but I waited like, I waited like less than six months. I waited like, I waited to get to Kansas city. We got to Kansas city two months after fucking, after I fucking ETS. Yeah. And, and actually, I, 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 didn't, like, I didn't really wait. I just fucking got to Kansas city and then did it. That's all. That's I, I all I did. I'd like to kind of add into that too, because like for real, do not wait because I waited. And I regretted waiting because I did. I waited until until I was practically homeless with my family to the point right. that like I was like, "What the fuck do I do?" Right. I didn't. I did not start getting my my benefits until I want to say eighteen or nineteen. Right. It was a little bit. It was a little bit prior to COVID, and you know when it happened. I mean, I got, got back pay, you know, because that is something that happens depending on how long the process takes. You can receive back pay for when you. Yeah. Uh, send in your application to when you actually get approved and that could be anywhere between three months to five fucking years sometimes i, I mean I, I i that's probably an, an exaggeration but you know you know where i'm going you know where i'm going with that yeah but you know it's you know i and i waited three months i was i got pretty lucky i, I got mine in three months and do it changed my life but it goes to show do not wait to get your benefits. I know I know a couple people right now who have been out of the army for like five or six years and then and you know they're struggling. I'm like, hey, get your benefits, get your earned benefits. You earned it, go and get it. Sure. And, and I I and I want people I want people to remember John. I know there's people out there, you know, you're getting out, you're getting ready to get out, you can't wait to be done with the fucking army, the marines, the navy, the air force, the coast guard fucking space force you're like fuck this i don't even want to think about it anymore i don't want to think about anything i did i just want to be done whatever you get for a rating is an award it is not it is not a fucking a leech on the system it is a fucking award you earned it you served your time mm -hmm. you did it you did your time honorably that's why you're getting those benefits it is, a, it is about that enough it is a it is awarded to you you have to yeah. you have to maintain your life. If you have 100% PNT for disability, if you have 100% PNT, you can get that PN you can get the only way to get that removed is if you go to jail. But you can still get it removed if you go to fucking jail. That's why like it, it, like you are it's an award. 
you can have that shit rescinded if you, if you act like a shit bag. You are still expected to uphold some semblance of being like a, a functioning member of society. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, but it is an award. You're given it. You was, you were, you're, it's given to you for honorable service and, you're, and the time you spent serving your country. Okay. You signed the dotted line. You signed that fucking blank check. All right. You gave your fucking soul to Uncle Sam for however many fucking years and fucking months and days you did your, you did your time and your service. Okay. It's an award. Stop being fucking proud, dude. That's pride fucking with you. Fuck pride. You don't listen. You don't fix your ass goes down. Oh, sorry. That was Pulp Fiction. My bad. Hold on. Sorry. (laughs) It's just, you know, I, I, it's there for you. You know what I mean? It's there for you. Just like you went for the army, the army has that for you. That is like, you know, know, in some perspectives, it's kind of like not obviously not severance, but in a way, like, you know, like here is, here is you, you earned this, you worked hard for this, but not bro. If your body and or mind or both got broke while you were in the fucking service, you will be compensated. Yeah. And that Mm -hmm. is what that is what that VA physical and like uh, psychological exams. And that goes with surgeries, too, because if you have surgeries and if that surgery was, you know, to a point where it's it's affecting your your day to day, Mm -hmm. you'll be compensated for it. Yes. Mental health. That's another thing, especially. Hi, hi, my name's Jay. Have we met? <laughs> like, that's yeah. Like, yeah. thank God, thank God, I have the fucking VA. Thank fucking God, I have the VA. S- straight up, straight fucking up. Well, I mean, I, and there's there's tons of other things that you know you get those VA benefits that award. You know, you also have other things to fall back on. Um, Jay, you know from very recent VA home loans. Thank you. I, I bought um, a house in fucking less than three weeks. I went. I went from. Like, from view, I went from viewing, viewing the house that I'm sitting in right now, viewing it, mm-hmm. to having keys in my hands in less than fucking 21 days. That is fucking psychotic. And yes, that's basically the story of Jay's life. But the fact that it was able to happen, the fact that we made it happen, was yeah. only because I served my country. I would have been so fucked at trying to find like another place if I'd have just been Joe Schmo on the fucking block, mm-hmm. because I did my time, because I did it honorably. Because I did things the right way, because I kept my nose clean after I got out. Fucking like I got a house in fucking three weeks and me and my kids are fucking eating steak and fucking mac and cheese. Fucking it's like it ain't it ain't rocket science. Don't suffer unneed. Do not suffer like needlessly. Don't suffer if you don't fucking have to, man. I like fucking hot and cold running water, bro. I like fucking food in the fridge. You know what I mean? Like I would like hours. It, just just because I can fucking live under the bridge and eat out of fucking cans doesn't mean I want my fucking kids to, okay? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 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 this is what we're getting at, guys. Like, don't be so fucking proud, dude. Like, get your ass up. Stop, stop gatekeeping yourself. Because all you're doing is gatekeeping. Yeah. All you're doing is gatekeeping yourself. Oh, somebody else needs it more. Like, no, 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 no. That money's already set aside. That money's for you. When you don't use that money, you're the only one that's not getting it. Nobody else is getting the money you don't use. You're the one not getting. Well, it. that's it. I mean, and it goes. I mean, there's so much that as veterans, we we have the opportunity for not just, you know, the awards with the disability ratings, because, yeah, there are some people that serve, you know, their a whole contract and come out with no fucking injuries, nothing yeah. be, and are perfectly fucking fine. They don't need the disability side of it. But you've got your GI bill. You've got the VA home loans. You've got yep. I mean, there's so many things as a veteran, you have the opportunity to yes. take advantage of 100 percent, 110 percent. I'm 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 gonna be one of those guys that's gonna tell you just like just like Jay's been saying, like John's been saying so far. Use it, use it because if you don't use it, it's not gonna get used anywhere else. That's that's strictly set aside for you from doing what you did for this country. I mean, I went and got my fucking master's degree due to the GI Bill. Um, you know, there's there's just it's it's there, use it. I mean, now, granted, the GI Bill does have some other caveats, like, you know, if you don't use the full amount, you can pass it on to your kids or your significant other and other shit like that within a certain amount of time. And they change that shit all the fucking time, too, where it's like, I, yeah, yeah. but that, and that's what, that's why we have places like the Vet Center, which if you're a veteran, you go to the Vet Center, you go to the fucking VA, you get, you get, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's all these different resources we have as veterans fucking use them find out find out what you can find out what you can do for your your particular situation that you're in you know there's so many different there's so many different places and categories 
and your status as a veteran, dude, like it is, it is a, like you will forever be a veteran. Nothing is going to ever change the fact that you serve your country. You did it honorably. You fucking earned what you got. You earned what you got. So fucking take it. It is okay to fucking eat at the table now, kids. You don't have to, you don't have to eat in the corner off the fucking crumbs that are falling off the table. You are allowed to sit at the big kids table now. Fucking come join us. All things are prepared. Okay. All things are prepared. Come fucking sit with us. Come hang out at the table. I love it. And I think there's a perfect transition into the final thought. Just got it today. Tap it off. Dude, I mean, you got that energy, man. Do you want to take it? I could probably take it today. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was actually just thinking too. Um, I, I know we talk, we talk, we talk about this every week. Uh, we talk about um, not giving up, not giving in. You know, we're calling numbers, we're calling friends, we're calling family. Um, there's always interesting statistics that come out when countries are attacked and countries are invaded. And that interesting statistic to me is that suicide rates drop. And I think Ukraine in the last two years has been no exception. Like the suicide rate in Ukraine has dropped. And it's because they 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 believe in something. They found something to believe. Even in, in their worst moments, the depression, the fucking terror, the fear of, of the, the Russian war machine. There's something bigger than ourselves out there. Okay. Um, when you guys have those, those moments of desperation please remember that like there are people out there that love you. There's people that care. Mm -hmm. Motherfucking strangers care about you and love you. Uh, me and my, me and my daughter were watching uh, V for Vendetta last night. Oh. And that, that scene where uh, she's in the, the prison and she's getting the notes, she's getting the notes passed to her through the wall. And she reads that note. And the very last thing the note says is like, like, even though you're a stranger, I will always love you. And I will love you with my whole heart. OK, mm -hmm. that's the shit you got to hold on to and remember. OK, we're doing this for fucking something bigger than ourselves. OK, when you are in crisis, when you're having a fucking moment, when your little fucking when your little raft in the middle of the ocean is getting ready to get overtaken by a giant wave. OK, call your family, call your friends. OK, if you need to call the fucking National Suicide Hotline, you can dial or text 988. You can dial 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Okay, but you got to fight. And we need you guys in this fucking fight. There are people and bad actors and people that are acting in bad faith all over the fucking world right now. We have got to stand up to this fucking bullshit. We need people in the fight. And every time we lose somebody, that's one more person we lost that could stand up and fucking fight with us. I need you motherfuckers to my left and right. I cannot do this shit by my fucking self. All right. I am not trying to be angry or sound fucking agitated. Okay. But every time I lose somebody, it, 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 it carves another piece out of my heart. Okay. And there's nothing left out of my fucking soul to carve out. Cause that shit, that motherfucker was gone fucking years ago. All right. I don't have much of my heart left. I can't lose anymore. All right. I'm tired of losing, but I guarantee you motherfuckers, if the fucking world ends, Jay is going to be fucking standing at the end, even if he's the last one, because I will not fucking go out and I will not bow down to that. All right. I need you guys standing tall. I need you guys staying strong. OK, if you're having a problem with the freaking alcohol. OK, if you're freaking having rough times. OK, like the American Dream Dusty Road hit some hard times sometimes. Right. Life gets hard. I got you, homies. Mm -hmm. Ask all three. Ask all three of the sons of bitches on this fucking podcast. We know about hard times. Yeah. All right. No, and my wife just had an anniversary for that on the twentieth. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's this is hard times. We're gonna get you fucking through this shit. That's exactly what the motherfuck we are here for. All right. That's exactly why, unlike other places, they're asking you for five minutes. We're asking you for a whole motherfucking ass week, 168 hours. Okay. We ask you guys for a week. Come back and see us next week if you're having hard times. We'll still be here. We'll be here every week. OK, just to make sure you're OK. All right. You guys come in and fucking see us. You come say hi anytime. Come on in. Water's warm. We love you. OK, but we need you fucking here. We can't do shit if you're not here. <clears throat> I got a place fucking right there for you. Right here to my fucking right. And you, I got a place right over here, right to my left. I need you here standing with me, shoulder to shoulder, holding the shield wall up. All right. So we can fight together mm -hmm. and fucking like 
get this goddamn bad business out of our fucking world so we can raise raise our fucking children in a place in a fucking in a country in a goddamn civilization without fear and loathing. All right. So keep your asses fucking up. Keep your heads up. Stay fucking motivated. Get your fucking ass off the couch this week. At some point, do something. All right. 168 hours. I expect to see everybody back here in formation. All right. Seven motherfucking days. Don't be scared. Jesus hates a pussy, so don't fucking be one. Slava Ukraini. Eroim Slava. <laughs> Love you guys, dude. Peace. All right. <laughs>